I want to welcome my next guest. Uh, I have Peter with me. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Dr. Housley. Yeah. So essentially, I have a rare condition. I have a, my um, condition is called um, hereditary spastic paraplegia. And that's now it's just being known. And I'm actually the, the ambassador for California with this condition. So I'm trying to tie with my group or my HSP group with um, your um, your facility. So I would like to see if there would be a possible way to essentially allow me to try out the, um, the being that I have foot drop. I'm, I would like to see if I can try out foot um, mechanism to see if I can, you know, strengthen those muscles. Um, so I would like to see if I can do that versus um, going in for surgery because I've already had one surgery and okay. it was not a fun experience. So I will tell you. Sure. Well, so Peter, thanks so much. Um, I have I have never worked with someone uh, with HSP before, um, but it's a it's a pleasure to to work with you and to to hear your story. Um, just just for my own my own benefit, just to understand more about you, um, tell me about your your experience so far. Have you gone through rehab? Um, you said you mentioned you did one surgery. Was it a tendon swap or uh, tendon lengthening? What was what was the surgery that you did? Well, essentially, it was an improper surgery where they actually okay. they went to my neck and they removed two discs. Okay. And um, I guess they fixed it with um, artificial hardware, okay. but I wasn't too happy with that. Okay. Um, and now that I know a little bit more about my disease, I'm trying to... Um, I just could say trying to find out better solutions for other individuals that have this disease or have um, the, the similar disease called PLS, which is um, primary or essentially there's HSP and PLS and they're mm -hmm. lumped together in the same disease group. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what I'm, I'm looking to do. I'm trying sure. to essentially find better avenues for other individuals with sure. this condition. Now, um, Peter, does is your primary concern, like you mentioned foot drop, is that yeah. the primary concern for you? I'm also, I was, while I was watching you move your hands too, you were talking, and, and much like me, you're a gesticulator, so you were moving your hands. So right. um, I'm I'm wondering, is uh, is it is mostly on one side? Is it uh, both sides? Is it distributed across your entire leg? Tell me a little bit about that. It's um, both legs. Both legs. So okay. both legs actually do the foot drop. Okay. And um, I haven't noticed anything else, anything different. Um, I actually just went to the an acupuncturist, and he told me that I have what is it called? Um, essentially it involves my speech. So okay. I, I notice that I say things are properly or I, I'll say um, words improperly and I'll, I'll adjust and I'll try to correct them. But that's another aspect of the disease. Okay, sure. No, that's, so, that's, that's fine. It's good to understand. So right. mostly lower extremity foot drop. Um, is it, does it affect your hips at all? It doesn't affect my hips. Okay. I okay. have good. lower back pain, um, but okay. that's due to the disease. So sure. I'm, I'm sure that I have a bulging disc in my lumbar spine. Um, as I was told by one of the doctors, um, and I feel that that's the main point of my issues but sure. that's neither here nor there sure well this is a good question and so let me let me always start off with the foundation in science and this will probably not surprise you because hsp is a relatively um 
Greer disorder. Um, right. And unfortunately, we haven't investigated the efficacy or safety profiles of the modus hand or modus foot um, right. in individuals with um, um, who are like you. And so that being said, I just want to you know, get that out in the open. We don't have that data. And I'm, I'm honestly, um, I knew we were, we were going to chat today. I did a little bit of digging and there just honestly isn't a whole lot out there um, in terms of the, the neurorehabilitation space for this. And so um, I would very much like to, to see if we could help. Um, again, it's without knowing specifically, um, you know, we're going to have very, very little predictive capabilities, but because we can track the progress, we can use that to condition our inferences about whether somebody's helping you. So that, mm -hmm. that could be useful. Um, now, I think, you know, with respect to how um, individuals with like PLS, for instance, is another, another case, um, they're often, um, they often will go under um, types of neurorehabilitation strategies that are very, very similar to this. Now, when it comes to differences between these more hereditary based conditions or these, um, another category is kind of like neurodegenerative diseases, as opposed to ischemic strokes or even hemorrhagic strokes, the main thing is um, not in the movements that are different and how we actually drive the, the changes, right? Those are fundamentally the same, right? We're trying to improve your ability to have good muscle tone and good right. volitional control, in your case, of your lower extremities. That concept is true and is conserved across all of those things. The big difference, it comes about how we deliver it and how we actually will dose it. So in the, let me give you some extremes here. In the case of someone with an ischemic stroke, um, they may need a lot of rehab, hundreds of repetitions of movement per day to cause a positive change. And chronically, that, that needs to happen. On the other end of that spectrum is maybe an individual with relapse and remitting MS and they're in a relapse period. And that individual may need very little movement to actually um, keep just the spasticity and the contractures down because they're in a hyperinflammatory state where if we did too much, we could actually cause problems. So those are kind of the end of the spectrum where we need to be very, very cautious about how we dose along that spectrum. And so uh, with regard to HSP, I think what we might want to do is do a bit of due diligence to see if we have any sort of contraindications for specific movements and where along the spectrum you might lie. And that would help inform us how we might want to move forward with um, sort of an investigation about um, if this could be helpful for you. Now, with respect to the fundamentals, I think it is very, very true. I think it could be very, very appropriate insofar as... Um, you know, we need to work on proprioceptive control. We need to work on your ability to sense things. We need to work on your ability to control and discriminate movements. Those things are, are well conserved and I think could be appropriate. Uh, but it's a matter of getting those nuances about how it's dosed. Um, those, those are where we would, we would want to spend some time um, thinking, uh, uh, you know, rigorously about how to move forward. Okay. That sounds um, wonderful. Yeah, but I think, you know, when it comes to... Um, uh, a trial period. That, that's one of the reasons, this is one of the great reasons why we have the trial period to actually um, see if it's a good fit. A, if it fits with your anatomy, that's a key. Most, I'd say 90% of individuals, 95% of individuals, it fits with their anatomy, um, just in terms of like body sizes and these sorts of things, because there's again, a distribution there. Um, and then if it's, if it's fun and engaging, that's another key, key for you as well. Um, so we kind of check those boxes off in the trial period, and then we can kind of have some some positive indication that it might be a good fit in terms of the efficacy, right? If you're seeing some reductions in tone, those things we can detect, right? We can actually quantify the forces and the lengths um, over time. And we can, we can see whether or not we're getting reduction in tone with you. And those types of, of things uh, would be nice ways of us getting positive confirmation that um, it is in fact, um, uh, maybe a good fit for you and also maybe for other individuals um, in your community. All right. Thank you. Yeah.